Hey y'all and welcome to my channel Jess Rella. If you have been here before and you're one of my awesome loyal subscribers or if this is your first time here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Y'all, it has been a minute since I have filmed. I think it's been like a month and there's some crazy mess going on in the world today and I want to try to bring a smile to your face. So pull you up a little glass. I got me some, this is Stella Rosa Peach. Um, and let's chat. And today's topic is going to be called My 400 Pound Life. So if you are interested in this topic today, please stay tuned. Cheers, y'all. Because we need it. Because shit crazy. Shit is crazy these days. But try to stay focused. So I actually wanted to do this topic a very long time ago. Let me start off by giving y'all my stats. I started off at 409 pounds. Okay, that was as of August 3rd, 2018. I had my weight loss surgery or vertical sleeve gastrectomy on December 3rd, 2018. As of today, I currently weigh 300. Oh, shit. No, I don't. Y'all keep doing that. I don't know what it is, but I keep saying 300. Let's not wish that upon myself. I currently weigh 288 pounds. So that is a total loss in 17 months of 121 pounds, y'all. First of all, I should have filmed when I hit under 300. Um, that was a huge milestone for me. I am currently 38 pounds away from my maintenance goal. I may keep going. Like I said, I'm, I, I want to be at 250. See how I feel there. Um, I've lost a total of how many pant sizes? I went from a 26 to 18, 19. I can't quite get to 19 and 20s are too big around my waist. So yeah, I went uh, a total of seven pant sizes down since uh, my weight loss journey and it has been beautiful and amazing. Um, and y'all can check out my other videos and just kind of see at different points of my journey, like, you know, what was going on. But I want to touch on my 400 pound life because I was over 409 pounds. So maybe some of you all may know what it's like, but I'm just going to skim really quickly because I don't want this to be a super long video um, about, you know, talking about how being 400 pounds was. Like, how was my life at over 400 pounds? I said 409. I was at 409. I was over 400 pounds. You know, I like to have my notebook, y'all. On some notes that I took about my experience being over 400 pounds, and maybe you all can relate, even if you weren't over 400, maybe you can, again, relate to some of the things that I dealt with or or how my mindset was at the time um so the first thing I want to touch on is looking back at pictures so of course I took a ton of pictures on this journey but when I look back at my pictures when I was 409 pounds I feel like I don't even know who that person is it is the strangest weirdest mind fuck ever okay like literally I'm like and I feel sad for me at that time you know what I'm saying I loved myself as much as I could I pushed through I did what I had to do but now that I've gotten in this place and I'm still not done, um, I'm happy with where I'm at. But I look back and be like, damn, like how miserable was I at that time? I do know that my day to day life was very robotic, right? I get up, go to work, come home, take care of my son, go to sleep. Like I had no social life. I have friends, of course, but I never really wanted to go out. I didn't feel confident. I didn't feel sexy. I didn't feel beautiful. I didn't feel attractive. So I kind of just, again, became a hermit for a very long time specifically after my last breakup um, in 2007. So, um, you know, I just avoided places all the time. Like I would have to talk myself out of going somewhere. I did that a lot. You know, my son would always ask like, mom, you know, can we go inside and eat? No, and we would always go to drive throughs Again, that was a part of my, you know, unhealthy eating habits. But, you know, we never went in and ate anywhere. We do that now when I, whenever I do take us out to eat, which is not a lot. Um, you know, I did not, I think I mentioned in the video before, I didn't want to have sex. I didn't want to have fat sex. I didn't feel comfortable with my body. There's an update on that. It'll be on the next video, but I'm going to hook y'all up with some info. Um, I didn't feel like I ate that much, which is weird because I, I wasn't grubbing all day. It's just that when I did eat, I didn't eat healthy. Um, so yeah, I, that's why I was kind of, I didn't understand you know the particulars but I was eating high calorie foods even though I wasn't eating that much in a day um I should have numbered these but whatever you keep it moving I didn't take full body pictures ever um I have a few which were just I don't even know why I took them maybe I was like hiking or something like that and I wanted to keep them I didn't know at the time you know until the day I went to my consultation in August 2018 I didn't know I was actually going to do the surgery um, up until maybe a month before when I finally made my mind up and scheduled the appointment. But 
I didn't take a lot of full body pictures. I used to, I was not playing games. If anybody was taking pictures of me, uh, excuse me, excuse, let, let me see it. Let me see that shit. Like I didn't play no games. I was, I'm still particular about pictures, but I'm not as bad because people will take random pictures of me now. And I'm like, Ooh, go girl, you look good. You know what I'm saying? But back then, like if you took a picture of me and you didn't tell me and I wasn't seeing it, like you were gonna get your ass cussed the fuck out. That's just it. The weird part about body dysmorphia is that even though I had reached such a high weight, I still didn't think I was that big. Can you all relate? I didn't know that I was that big until I seen pictures, hence don't take no fucking body pics of me, right? But I just, I would look down, I would look in the mirror, like I just didn't see it. And I don't know, body dysmorphia is a motherfucker. I had it before, I have it now, it's better now, but that's another thing. Um, you know, food was my comfort. It still is to a point. I just can't eat as much. Um, yeah, man, I felt invisible in the world at 409 pounds, to be very honest with you. I knew I always wanted to fall in love. I knew I always wanted to get married and have a family and all of those things or complete my family because I already had a son by then. But I really just didn't think it was ever going to happen for me. I didn't think that anybody wanted me, that anybody desired me. Um, yeah. So another huge thing that I dealt with is, is not that I didn't talk to any guys. It's not that I wasn't attracting a few here and there because I feel like it wasn't a lot, but I literally was taking crumbs. Whatever somebody threw at me, I took it and I ran with it. And so it caused me to, you know, I was celibate for the whole time. I was celibate for two years and seven months. And you know, I'm saying was because we'll get into that later, but for two years and seven months, um, you know, I always question if anybody was talking to me, was it because they just wanted sex from me, because they had a fetish, a fat fetish or whatever. Um, I just didn't feel like anybody was genuinely interested. Again, I had a boyfriend. Um, he was the last person I was with, which caused me to be celibate for two years and seven months. Um, but even with him, we struggled. He was a bigger guy. You know, I was a bigger girl. But here's the thing. Even though I was always a, always a larger woman, I never liked heavier set guys. So I really stepped outside of my comfort zone and dated him. You know, he was a different race. He was a different size. He came from a different background. He was a wonderful guy. Let's not get it twisted. I thought he was the one. Um, you know, we didn't last very long. But again, after that, like, if there was anybody that was that I deemed attractive, like there was this one guy I had known for a long time, and all of a sudden, he wanted to talk to me. I soon found out that he had a fetish for big women, because he was, you know, what I'm saying, and he was like, you know, we kind of like women that are bigger, because you know, because your ass is inadequate. Um, but I remember just questioning that whole connection. And again, we had known each other since back in the day when I was smaller, but you know, I would hang on to any shred of attention that anybody would give me. I really did. You know, it didn't cause me to give it up, but I just held on to it and it was very unhealthy, um, very unbalanced, unevil connections during that time because my self-worth was very low. So all in all, it was very hard being that large. I actually uh, have gone back to my doctor that I had back in like 2012 after I had my son. And uh, I had a, I seen a record of my weight over, you know, the past eight years. And y'all, I was floored. Like I literally could just, you know, you could just look at it. Like I was gaining like 20, 30 pounds, 40 pounds a year. One year, I think I gained like 50 pounds. Like I just, it just spiraled out of control and I could not fix it. And so I'm just very grateful that God led me to VSG. I'm very grateful for my doctor. I'm grateful for all of the support. I'm grateful for all of you who watch my videos, who inbox me. We talk, we chat, we're building relationships with each other um, because you all keep me going. And even though, you know, I'm not losing weight at an accelerated pace. I'm very happy with my process, progress. I'm very happy where I am right now. I'm going to keep going. I find so much energy and so much power in this journey. And I hope that you all find that too. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about my 400 pound life. Um, you all please stay safe out there. I have self-isolated me and my son. Um, I go out to the grocery store by myself. I come back. I don't, I don't take him out with me. We have hand sanitizer. We're washing our hands all the time. And I'm hoping and praying that, you know, in the next coming weeks that our lives will seemingly turn back to normal, but we will be moving in a different way, if that makes sense. Like we're more cognizant of ourselves. We're more respectful. We're more loving. We're more caring. We're more helpful. So I hope that this whole crisis has changed the world in a positive way, but that we can all get back to the things we love or, or develop new things. So 
thank you all for watching. Um, I love you all very much. Again, please stay safe out there. Hit your girl up on Instagram. I am Jessrella XO for my weight loss page. I'm Ariel J X O X O for my regular page. Um, and you know, since I got all this time in my hands, <laughs> you're gonna get videos after video after video. So I love you all so much. Um, take it easy tonight, and I will see you all later. Bye. Bye.